glad to hear. So there's three things I like to say that are core to who I am as a poet. I'm also an engineering major, but poetry is just as important to me. And the first of those things is loving other people and loving each other. So this first poem is entitled More Than Just the Color. And a tear sprouted from her eye and sprinted down her face at the same pace that hope was being drained from her body, a tear. Dense with the echo of those people telling her what she couldn't do, full of the failures from the time she tried anyway, overflowing with the hurt she felt when she found her arms burning from reaching out to people who refused to grab her hands through everything. She kept her head so high, but so deep inside her true feelings she would hide, yes. This young girl felt like she'd never fit in all because of the amount of melanin she had in her skin. You see, black to her was the color of the inside of her house. When her mom didn't have enough money to pay the bill to keep the lights on, black was the color of the sky. When a dangerous storm was coming and away from it was the safest place to be, black was the color worn at funerals where deep sadness thickened the air and the truth of loss threatened to break down even the strongest of individuals. Because, because she was black, she felt like she couldn't follow her dreams. Around her wrist and her ankles, she saw the heaviest of chains. Chiseled by her experiences and bound by all she'd seen, the roots of distaste were planted so deeply. The only thing that I could bring myself to do was to make an introduction. So I asked this young girl, have you ever met you? And have you so quickly forgotten all that you've gone through? Like, the times you're trusting someone decided to fire back, leaving you in pieces, and you had at least some happiness until you got yours back. Or the moments where you needed someone in your future but had to leave them in your past. Or the instance when I'm bending knee, you pray to God the struggle wouldn't last. So yes, you're black. And you're so strong. Woo. And what about that culture you can call your own? <clears throat> Redefined through the ages, insanely contagious. I know you see them trying to clone. <laughs> it's because your black is the beauty of the starry nighttime sky when Harriet Tubman Woo. risked her life Woo. to make sure we could be in this Woo. room tonight. Oh, yes, Woo. you're black. It's the passion of Rosa Parks to sit down and the courage to face the consequences and action so very profound. Young girl, you're black. Is the love of the peaceful protest of MLK. Because mediocre treatment wasn't good enough and it was time to pave a new way. In order to bring somebody up, sometimes you first have to come down. Understand their hurts, their worries, their fears in order to turn their world around. Know that every time you define yourself, in part, you help to define others too. But time is up. We need change now. And it has to start with you. Uh
thing, like I said, loving other people. So I am so devoted. I love helping other people in the community. I'm sure all of you guys too. I love the voices that you have here. It's amazing listening to them. <coughs> the second of these things I've definitely worked toward this year especially is growing personally and self-love, loving myself. So I've been going through a pretty big change and this next poem is a story about that. Stuck in one place, I didn't move. Heart beating frantically because I was at the mercy of someone I hardly knew. Heat from around, threatening the safety of my skin. Eyes slowly filling with tears, I just couldn't hold it in. I felt the burn like a razor, scraping layers at my scalp. Acidic and wicked, I was desperate for some help. Fighting a battle that scratched and dug and clawed at my heart and my soul. I just felt so flawed. And then Ruby, my hairstylist, rinsed out my relaxer. Shuddering at the experience, I just couldn't seem to capture why. Every seven weeks, I'd do it all again. Choking the culture out of each strand so I can feel worthy in my dark brown skin. But the process wasn't over. Next, it was time to blow dry and straighten it. I'd been relaxed since I was five. I'd been relaxed since I was five. I definitely wasn't new to this. And the sizzling murmur was constant as 400 degrees kissed, the oils battling to protect the hair strands that were left. The smell of burnt products permeated the room as my hair and readied irons finally met. The steam and the smoke coated my throat as I tried to stifle a cough caused by the systematic poison that whispered silently that this was the way that it had to be. Daydreaming in that salon, I realized the battle that I fight was not with the creamy crap, but the fact I felt like I needed it to feel accepted in society's limelight, yes. Authentic kinks and curls illuminated these fears Fears that for years I had cognitively steered clear, like after transitioning, stealing all of my laughter, were the glass ceilings I could no longer shatter. The incredible relationships that'd be lost in the fro, the shallow depth and inaccurate assumptions of my intellectual prose, daydreaming in that salon. I really began to weigh. Pound for pound, if I cared what those loyal critics had to say on the scale of truth. And the only stop sign in sight was perched atop a pole that whispered, maybe I might. But he said, knock and the door will be opened. So I started pounding hard for the faith to finally free the me I sought to be, whether they did or did not agree. Ruby began the finishing touches, barely bumping my overprocessed sentence because for me, she knew I never wanted too much of a bend. She reminded me to book my next appointment quick because her schedule fills so fast. I left that salon that day knowing that relaxer would be my last. So the last emphasis that I've had at least this past year has been on growth, personal growth, just in always working to become the person of my dreams, which 
might sound a little funny, but that's something that I've definitely been working on. So what I've done is I've uh, created a website, so if you're interested in looking more at more of my work, kendallstokes.com, and I also have a YouTube channel that's linked from my website, so that's if you're interested. But this last piece is a poem I wrote to myself to challenge myself to be my best. And I want to share that challenge with you all today. Do you have any idea what you could do? How your biggest adversary in this life is you? And the delays that you make in entertaining the snake's will negatively impacts you more than I can delineate except how everybody wants to eat, but few will take the time to cook to study the recipes and learn the necessities, but on the results they'll surely be hooked and you can't put your future in somebody's hands and be upset when it slips through their fingers. Whether it's a friend of a lifetime, a family member, or your love that you do anything